Strickland, you're in. Let's do the man dance. I'll show you how to really dance. It's fucking proper gone off there. We were just standing outside and you hear the big fucking smash of like glass, isn't that? Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside the Cage, where we bring you the latest and exciting updates of UFC. First, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. UFC 294, Makachev vs. Oliveira 2, and Chimaev vs. Costa announced by Dana White. Here, UFC 294 just got epic performances of the fighters. At the same time, Dana White made two blockbuster announcements for the promotion's return to Abu Dhabi. And you won't believe the matchups. In the main event, we've got an intense showdown between lightweight world champion Islam Makachev and former champ Charles Oliveira. Do you remember when these two warriors clashed for the 155-pound crown last year? And now, they're going head-to-head -head again. However, Makachev's been on fire and defending his title once and coming off a thrilling superfight with Alexander Volkanovsky. But Oliveira is hungry for improvement after his impressive TKO win against Benil Dariush. And that's not all, guys. Kamzat Chimaev is back in action, and he's facing one-time UFC title challenger Paolo Costa in a can't-miss middleweight showdown. Chimaev's been on a roll since his debut. While his recent wins against Gilbert Burns and Kevin Holland have been nothing short of spectacular. As for Costa, he's eager to bounce back from his previous losses and show he's still a force to be reckoned with. But wait, there's more. Dana White also spilled the beans on some other thrilling matchups. Ikram Aliskarov will take on Nasordin Imovov. And we've got undefeated prospect Mohamed Mokayev going up against veteran fan favorite Tim Elliott. It is going to be a night to remember, and we can't wait to see how it all unfolds. Adesanya's call-outs and title fight announcements for Strickland? Let's talk about Israel, Adesanya who never shies away from a good rivalry. He's always making waves on social media, and this time he's calling out Drikas Duplessis. So, here's the story. Adesanya went on social media to criticize Duplessis for not taking the title fight against him at UFC 293 in Sydney, Australia. Can you believe it? Now the drama has begun. Duplessis turned down the fight and mentioned a foot injury as the reason. Before that incident, Duplessis had a solid win against Robert Whittaker at UFC 290. Later on, Adesanya even confronted him in the octagon, and it seemed like we were in for an intense build-up to their clash at UFC 293. A grudge match alert. But here's the twist. Duplessis didn't commit to a quick turnaround for the fight with Adesanya. Instead, he's been poking at the champ. Surely he takes a clever move. I don't even know how to start this, bro. Rikas de Pussy. You fucking bitch. Oh, all he had to do was put on some gloves. I was ready to go again. No, you weren't. You're a bitch. That's why I'm not taking this fight. Your foot sore. Nigga, my knee was jacked too for my last fight. Guess what I did? I showed up because that's what a fucking champion does. Championship caliber. Built different. A lot of you fighters talk about, oh, I'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. No, you won't. I do. Alex Volkanovski does. We're, both di we're built different. After some back and forth with Drikas Duplessis, Adesanya had another fighter in mind. Can you guess who? It's none other than Sean Strickland. Now Strickland is on a roll. Strickland, you're in. Let's do the man dance. I'll show you how to really dance. Yeah, well yeah, I just, I the title while you guys talking shit about I can fight, I can fight. No you can't, you pussy, bitch. So my fight fans, the hype is real. Keep an eye out for updates because things are getting intense. Andrew Tate reacts to Cerrone's criticism. There's some drama heating up in the combat sports world. Recently. Andrew Tate has been in the spotlight, and again, not for a good reason. Despite the ongoing legal issues, Tate seems to be carrying on as usual, doing what he does best on social media. He's not shying away from the fuss, that's for sure. This time, Tate got into a feud with UFC Hall of Famer Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Lately, he expressed his dislike for Tate's work inside the ring during a conversation with Adam-22. Now, opinions are flying all over the place. During legal troubles, Tate's social media tricks are raising eyebrows, and his beef with cowboy Cerrone adds more fuel to the fire. Cerrone pulled up some old Andrew Tate kickboxing matches and was showing me them and did a pretty good job of making the point of this guy can't fight, Adam-22 said. Moreover, he brushed off Cerrone's comments like a champ and pointed out every other person in the fight game. 
The thing about fighting as a sport is that everybody who watches it goes, this guy can't fight. Everyone at home who's never even fought says this guy can't fight, or the other fighters say this guy can't fight, which is why as a fighter you constantly feel like you have something to prove, Tate said. Even if you win 100 fights in a row, there's going to be someone out there that says you can't fight. I'd like to think that my record stands for itself. After dismissing the comments, Andrew Tate decided to send a direct message to Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Confidently, he throws down the metal glove, right? If he thinks I can't fight, then if he wants to tell me to my face and kick my ass, he's welcome to try. I strongly believe he will regret that decision, and that's as far as I need to take it. So yeah, this is the stuff that gets fans pumped up. Fighters calling each other out and putting their skills on the line. It's like a real-life showdown brewing in the virtual world of social media. Guys, if you're enjoying the video, we'd love your support. Just hit that subscribe button to motivate us to bring you more exciting content. Daniel Cormier predicts fans' reaction to Makachev's next fight. In the twists of events, the gossip mill of UFC is buzzing in its full swing. Daniel Cormier has some thoughts about Islam Makachev's next fight. And now, his next title defense is set for Saturday, October 21st at UFC 294 in Abu Dhabi. But wait, the big question is, who will be Makachev's opponent? You know, Charles Oliveira has been on a roll. It seems like a strong contender, right? But Oliveira won't be ready in time for UFC 294. Bummer for the fight fans. Some people are wondering if Dustin Poirier or Justin Gaethje might step up for the October bout. But let's be real. It's doubtful either of them would be able to make such a quick turnaround. Damn, the suspense is killing us. I think Islam Makachev will next fight against someone that is not even necessarily on our radar. It's supposed to be the winner of Gaethje versus Poirier, but I do not believe that those guys will come out of that fight clean and be healthy enough to put a title fight right that soon. Continuing, Cormier said, I don't know who he's going to fight, but someone's about to get a blessing because there will be no one else. He will not fight Leon Edwards. I don't think the UFC is going to allow him to be in two title super fights without having to defend the championship one time yet against a lightweight. So let's keep your eyes peeled for more news and official announcements. Let the speculations run wild until we get the official word. It's going to be a blast. McGregor's quick exit from the pub. It seems that the drama never seems to leave UFC legend Conor McGregor's side. Last night, he was spotted leaving a pub in Merseyside, and the police were called to the venue for an incident. After the funeral of his dad's sister, he decided to pop into the saddle club in Birkenhead for a little downtime. But things took an unexpected turn. Here, a video emerged that showed McGregor racing out of the pub and speeding off in his 4x4. Of course, rumors started flying. Well, the saddle club has stepped up to set the record straight. They clarified that McGregor was not involved in any trouble and left the venue as soon as things got heated. They described him as a gentleman during the intimate family funeral. He was courteous, polite, and well-mannered to all our staff and members when in communal areas through the time he was here, taking pictures, signing autographs, and donating to certain charities on behalf of the family. When the incident occurred, Mr. McGregor was upset by the actions of certain people attending the funeral, and Mr. McGregor's security detail decided it necessary to leave to avoid unnecessary speculation and attention. Once again, Conor McGregor is keeping the social media world on its toes. After the incident at the pub in Merseyside, he took to Twitter to share a cryptic voice note, and it's got everyone scratching their heads. Hey, it's fucking proper gone off there. We're just standing outside. And you hear the big fucking smash of like glasses and that. And then he ran out with his bodyguards and was like, hey, get me out, get me out of here now. And he's like pulling at the car handle, trying to get it, get open, get the car open. And he just fucking span off me. But uh, I spoke to a lad who was in there. He'd been in the toilets for like 35 minutes with, in, in the women's one. Um, so I reckon he's been fucking smashing someone in the women's. No caption, no context, just McGregor being McGregor. Later on, the Irishman had been in New York on holiday with his family before heading to the UK for the funeral. He even posted photos on Instagram after the event. It's clear he's going through a tough time, and maybe these cryptic messages are his way of dealing with it. But of course, with McGregor, controversy always seems to follow. It left people in wonder. Is it a joke or just some McGregor-style mockery? Who knows? He loves keeping us guessing. All right, guys, that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. 
See you at the next one. Until then, goodbye.